Mm, excuse me. Uh, so let's keep going. Uh, I'm feeling better. A bit a little under the weather. And um, so we haven't done any Bible studies for a week, but I ended on a Wednesday. So the next one was Thursday. So I wanted to start back on a Thursday, even though I'm not 100% by any stretch. So for in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So it sounds a lot like what we've already been um, studying. And uh, I'll go ahead and bring it up in the New Living. Read through it in the New Living like we've been doing. See if that helps us a little bit. Just to help me kind of get through this. Um, when he died, he died once to break the power of sin. But now that he lives, he lives for the glory of God. So you also should consider yourselves to be dead to the power of sin and alive to God through Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Do not let sin control the way you live. Do not give in to sinful desires. Do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead, give yourselves completely to God. For you were dead but now you have new life. So use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. Sin is no longer your master, for you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace. Again, just make sure you go through, you would want to start this Roman series from the beginning on my playlist on my channel because uh, I've been stopping and teaching to what all of this means. You read this and you think that there's free will and the way it's written. Many times it's written in a way that you have these choices and you're told these things to do. But then we go to the Bible verses that trump those that really actually tell you that it's God that does it all in you and through you. You have no free will ability to fix yourself. And if you want to know, just ask. If you don't want to go through the previous Bible studies and you're listening to this for the first time, just ask. But um, grace, of course, is God choosing you from before the foundation of the world. That was 14. And so Being under grace was something they misuse in these false teaching pulpits. So you're under God's love for you. And Jesus loses not one of his sheep. And it's very clear that the Lord comes into your life through a spiritual baptism. And then takes you through the fiery trials, what they call the baptism by fire. Because John the Baptist said, one will come after me, baptizing with the Holy Spirit and fire. And we've shown you the fiery trials Bible verse. 
fiery trials Bible verse. I don't know why I can never remember it. We love it, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as some strange thing has happened unto you. And that's when the Holy Spirit comes into your life, like it came into Saul's life, who later became Paul, when Saul was killing Christians as a Pharisee. And the Lord called him on the road to Damascus and put him through the fiery trials. And the fiery trials take place all the way through your death. You're always getting called out of the world a little more and more each time. And um, yeah. So anyway, that's Christ working in you. Well, then, since God's grace has set us free from the law, does that mean we can go on sinning? Of course not. And I think that was stated previously in last week's studies when we left off. Again, kind of repeating the same things over and over, which is fine. Does that mean we can go on sinning? Of course not. Don't you realize that you become the slave to whatever you choose to obey? Know ye not that whom ye yield to yourselves, servants to obey his servants, ye are to whom ye obey, whether of to sin or of obedience of righteousness. Yeah. That word choose is thrown in the New Living Translation. Because you're not choosing anything. Sheep are born lost. Goats are born goats. Sheep get the call at some point in their life. You can be a slave to sin, which leads to death, or you can choose to obey God. Again, the word choose is added in verse 16. We just read verse 16. There's no choose in there. Thank God once you were slaves of sin, but now you wholeheartedly obey his teaching we have given you. You now, okay, you now obey this teaching which we have given you. Now you are free from your slavery to sin and you have become slaves to a righteous living. You're a slave either way. There's no doubt about it. There is no freedom in this life. There's no choice in this life. Goats are born goats. Sheep are born lost. Because of the weakness of your human nature, I am using the illustration of slavery to help you understand all of this. Previously, you let yourselves be a slave to impurity and lawlessness, which led ever deeper into sin. Now you must give yourselves to be slaves to righteous living so that you will become holy. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin. Ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which has delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members, servants, to uncleanliness and to iniquity, unto iniquity, even so now yield 
your members servants to righteousness unto holiness that's why we read it in the in the new living a lot of Paul's are very tough to read in the King James. And the stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords, that the purpose might be, uh, that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. So he's thrown into the den of lions. Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments of mu music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver you from the lions? Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God have sent his angel and shut the lions' mouths that they have not hurt me for as much as before him innocent innocent innocency was found in me and also before thee o king have i done no hurt then was the king exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take up daniel out of the den so daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his god love y'all very much i'll try to get better and better each day sorry